Shalom, shalom. Greetings to you all in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, wherever you are. This is another day given or granted to us by our Lord for a purpose. And always remember that the purpose is, is good. There's no evil purpose. The purpose is always good. The idea of every day is a good one. We are not granted a day to suffer. We are granted a day to get to know God. And it doesn't matter where you are. You can still open your heart to get to know more of Him. And remember, the more you get to know Him, the more you get to know yourself. I want to know I want you to know that we don't know ourselves we don't know ourselves or we don't know him and yet you can never discover him and not discover yourself or discover yourself and never discover him we are one and we are one with him Discovering yourself is very, very important. And through the knowledge of the gospel, we discover ourselves. And this is why we present this to you. I'm telling you, if you get to know the gospel, you, dis you discover yourself. You know, there's a lot. You, you can desire someone to do something for you. Or you want someone to hype you or tell you this is going to happen to you or blah, blah, blah. But I'm telling you, if there is any gift you can give to yourself is to get to know the gospel or by discover yourself. Crisis of identity is a common one. People have issues with the knowledge of who they are. And you know, if there is a territory that is unexplored, of course, it's who we are. Identity. And you know how much this identity has been misunderstood? We have to discover ourselves. I'm telling you, and nobody is supposed to do it for yourself in the first place. When the gospel comes to you, you choose to open yourself to the gospel. You are helping yourself because you want to know who you are. I'm telling you, you can all live your life wasting it in many things not knowing exactly what you should focus on because you are already abusing who you were because you don't know who you were. You should make up your mind to get to know something every day. You should make up your mind. Something about God, something about you. You see, you can be seated somewhere, you can be somewhere and complain about this, complain about that, complain about things which are not working, complain about things that are not moving the way you want. But if you focus on discovering God, discovering yourself, you probably will realize that you are focusing on the wrong thing, on wrong stuff. Probably what you are focusing on is not the right thing right now. Because if you discover yourself, you know what to focus on. Exactly. I pray for you in the name of Jesus. That you find out. And you take your time, exercise who you were, what you have. Revealed to you by God himself. In Jesus mighty name I pray. In Jesus mighty name. Romans chapter 8 verse 17 it says. And if children then heirs. Heirs of God and join heirs with Christ. If so be that we suffer with him. That we may be also glorified together. Join heir with Christ. I want to talk about the join heir with Christ. That we are not heirs just like that. If we are heirs, we are joint. He's talking about we are heirs together with Christ. But he uses the word joint heirs. Joint heirs with Christ. I want you to remember that uh, he's talking about 
join air with Christ. That means together with Christ or in Christ. And every time you see or hear the word in Christ, you have to understand that that's the greatest word, but that encompasses all that God want to mean. If you are a Christian, you are going to spend your time discovering all that you have. You will never be worthier than the day you were regenerated. That means if there's a, a wealthy person, it's you. Like we heard, we said you can live a self-imposed poverty. That means separation. You know, poverty begins with separation in Genesis. The day Adam separated himself from God. It was the entrance of poverty. So the entrance of poverty is, the beginning of poverty is the day Adam separated himself from God. And the end of poverty is when we become one with Christ. That's the end. And the first thing you inherit is God himself. Think about it. This is what I'm presenting to you. This is called self-imposed poverty. The rest of your life. I mean, you can have that as, a, as your experience all your life. What you must do is to discover how to explore and enjoy all that God has already done for you. You see now, instead of wasting your time complaining of this, complaining over that, you can choose to discover all that has been given to you. If you are not impressed with who you are in Christ, you have not seen him yet. You see? You have not what? You have not seen him yet. You have not seen him yet. That means... You have never discovered or encountered you <laughs> in Christ. You know, when you have not... Again, when you discover yourself in Christ, you've been impressed by yourself but the you in Christ. You see what I mean? You have not seen him yet if you're not impressed. Because you have to be shocked first. I'm telling you, Jesus Christ incarnated into human flesh to be your legal representative. Your legal representative. When he incarnated into human flesh, he was legally representing you. You are represented before the Father. So in Christ is the consummate declaration of the gospel. God divinely locates the believer in a person. Whatever he is, you are. Whatever he is, wherever he is, you are. Whatever he has, you have. You are called a joint heir. That's the word. Join heir of, Christ, of Jesus Christ. The believer is that. In fact, this means that a believer identical is identical to Jesus Christ. Equal position grants you equal position, 100%. The same. The life that the father possesses within himself is something totally different from everything or anything experienced on the natural plane. It is different not only in the degree, but also in kind. It's not in degree, but in kind. It is a newness of life, a new quality of life, supernatural quality, not just an intensification, of power already possessed, but the sudden emergence of a new and entirely original element, Christ himself. That's what you have. You see, the word joint heir, of course, is sacleronomos. It means an equal heir, participant in common, fellow heir, heir together with. Paul points out 
that our participation together with the shared life of Christ is such that we have been appointed as heirs of equal right together with him. We are not just heirs. We are joint heirs with Christ. See, how wonderful. It would be to inherit any heirs We are joined heirs with Christ. How wonderful that is. To be, to inherit any amount of God's glory and power. But to think that we share equally with the amount of God's glory and power. One who has inherited everything that God is and has is beyond comprehension. If we are joint heir with Christ, and we know Christ has inherited everything, it's just beyond our minds, our imagination. Our joint heirship with Christ is a legal implication. See, a very legal implication when we talk about our heirship with Christ, see, of our sonship rights. Once you're a son, then you have rights to be an heir. This is not a 50, 50 per, 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 partition of the inheritance between Christ and the believer, but Christ as well as the believer both inherit 100% of the patrimony. So in the same way that a check that is made out to two people cannot be cashed without the co-endorsement of both parties, so our joint heirship with Christ cannot be taken advantage of without our cooperation. See, unaware of this, many Christians are trusting that the Lord will produce the benefits of salvation for them. They are actually in wrong and they are not aware that they can do nothing without him. But do not realize that he will not do anything without us. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20. See, many of us, that's what we know. We, we say, okay, we can do nothing without him. But we think he will do things without us. That that's the wrong part. The way we place our endorsement on the check is to believe and act like what God promised in his word is true. Christ has already signed his name to every promise in the word. We are not waiting for him. He is waiting for us. Glory to God. Most suffering does not fulfill the condition. It is suffering with Christ. So we're talking about, we'll talk about sufferings together with Christ. But I'm telling you here, He's talking about we are joint heir with Christ. We are not waiting for him. He's waiting for us. What is he waiting us for? He's waiting for us so that we may discover that, you know what? We are into this together. If he has the authority and the power and allowed to do things, he's going to do it with us. He can never do it without us. And this is a privilege. Brothers and sisters, we have to discover we are, we are joint heirs. It means not only that we can do anything without him, but he cannot do anything without us. Glory to God. Shalom, shalom. Remember to subscribe on Church of Life Rwanda and you'll be getting more of these teachings. You're blessed.